So a while ago, a friend and I were talking about some of my favorite movies. He asked me to explain what made Dead Poet Society so special to me, so I thought I would make this video to highlight some of my favorite parts and point out some scenes or techniques that other people might have missed. As with any movie I talk about, there are going to be some spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie or don't want anything spoiled, make sure to pause this video and go check it out. It's definitely worth your time. Set in the late 1950s, the story follows a group of fictional secondary students attending the elite and conservative Welton Academy boarding school. Starring Robin Williams as their new and mercurial English teacher, the boys are encouraged to seize the day as they learn about poetry, literature, and love, much to the chagrin of their parents at the school board. Robin's efforts as Mr. Keating do pay off for better or for worse, as the boys begin to think for themselves, challenge authority, and get both themselves and their teacher in deep trouble. What the hell is going on here? Though the film has been criticized as being recycled, see a separate piece, and perhaps lacking in depth, it still holds a special place in my heart. I think that few movies in the genre really capture the genuine emotions and reactions of students in the age group being portrayed. The situations that the boys in the Dead Poets Society experience should be familiar for most people who grew up with strict parents, most people who struggled with finding ways to express themselves, or most people who experience the all-consuming nature of that near-authoritarian school board rule. Take, for instance, this short clip right after Neil's play. Without even knowing the story, I think just his change in expression speaks volumes and paints a truly vivid picture of the range of emotions he experiences at that instant. You can practically feel his insight sinking, and I'm sure we've all been there before. I could probably go on ad nauseum highlighting small interactions like this throughout the movie, but I think most of that material has been covered by others previously, and it probably wouldn't make for an interesting video anyways. Instead, I'd like to highlight four key scenes or techniques about this film that jumped out for me, and why those elements made the film special. Let's start with one of the first scenes in the movie. Throughout the movie, Mr. Keating, as with most teachers in real life, faces a delicate dilemma. He has to find a way to reach and inspire students without resorting to ranting or simply talking at them. The students too, as actors, face the challenge of showing true interest in the material being presented and the way in which it is being presented. Had director Peter Weir instructed Robin Williams to jump on top of the desk in the very first scene, it's almost certain that Mr. Keating would have come across as a conceited maniac, and the students probably would have dismissed him outright. Instead, however, Weir employs a much more subtle expository tactic. Let's watch the scene. Come on. Just as simple as that. A teacher walking through a classroom, beckoning the students to follow, if they wish. Immediately, we as an audience are curious. Who is this guy? What does he want? Where is he taking us? And really, isn't that what a sense of learning is all about? Thinking back on my education, I struggle to recall those instances of genuine curiosity, save maybe some occurrences in primary school. As far as I was concerned, school was all about getting to the next grade. Yet, by having Mr. Keating walk through the class, evoking that sense, that sense of adventure, in one scene, the director Andy Weir has broken the spell. The audience and the students have embarked on a journey with Captain Keating at the helm. This leads me to one of my other favorite film techniques, and one of particular relevance to Robin Williams' portrayal of Mr. Keating, improvisation. Most people familiar with Robin's past work knows his panache for comedy and improvisation. From Goodwill Hunting to the genie Aladdin, Robin reigned as the ad-lib king, painting a wonderful landscape of humor and wit, and adding that extra dimension of relatability and that spark of life to his films. Dead Poet Society is no exception. In fact, what you may not have known is that for most of the scenes where Mr. Keating was instructing the class, that was actually Robin improvising. The first time they shot this scene, they had scripted all of Robin's lines. You can also imagine maybe John Wayne is Macbeth going, Well, is this a dagger I see before me? <laughs> now, there are a lot of movies and shows where this can work. MASH comes to mind. But both the director and the writer noticed something fundamentally off about Robin's rigid performance. They conferred for a while, and, well, I'll let Tom Shulman do the talking. No, so he, uh... If anything, Robin, the first day, I think, was 
too tight. He was too bound up in the script. And Peter did said, let's just do an improv. Just come in. What would you like to teach the class? And Robin's going, I, I don't know. He said, mm, what do we, Robin said, well, maybe some Shakespeare. So we shot it, and that's, that's where we got the improv on the, or the scene with John Wayne and so forth, you know, doing Macbeth. So, uh, and ro once Robin realized, oh, yeah, I'm teaching, that's a di even if the students aren't speaking back, it's a dialogue. I'm looking at them. They're giving back to me. He got it right away, and it just loosened him up, and... He, that was the only thing we had to do to sort of get him to connect to the material. It's hard to think of a more suitable actor to evoke genuine emotions and laughs from both the actors and the audience. Or take this scene, where Mr. Keating was supposed to be yelling at Nuanta, but Robin offered to keep the dialogue and instead provide a different tone. But Carpe Diem is sucking all the marrow out of life. Sucking the marrow out of life doesn't mean choking on the bone. She was a time for daring time for caution and a wise man understands which is called for if i could think of one flaw about this film it's that tom shellman really didn't capitalize on or nurture a love for literature and poetry in the students as much as he could have moreover i don't think he experimented enough with the interplay between those literary mediums and the dialogue or events in the film yes the boys met in a cave and yes they recited some verse throughout the film However, the boys seem more like they were falling in love with the idea of Mr. Keating and the idea of rebellion, rather than embracing the rich tapestry of the underlying motivations for those pursuits. That might not necessarily be a bad thing, after all, one could argue that the surface rebellion was merely a step in the journey to enjoying life, but let me point out a scene that really drives home what I'm talking about. I'm referring, of course, to one of the final scenes in the movie, where Neil, playing the role of Puck, delivers the epilogue to Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. To fully grasp the scene, you need a little bit of knowledge about the role of Puck and the play itself. In essence, the role of Puck's epilogue is a plea to the audience. He's saying that if the cast has offended you, just think about it as if it were a bad dream. Don't be upset with Puck, because if you forgive the cast, they'll make everything alright. Or, Puck is a liar. And so, with Shakespeare as his voice, here is Neil's last attempt to implore his father for acceptance. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. Else the puck a liar call. And again, his reaction after his plea is spurned. The last scene I'd like to point out is probably my favorite scene in the whole movie, and I don't think it gets anywhere near the recognition it deserves. It occurs after Neil's suicide, when Todd is being marched up the stairs by the principal to face an interrogation. Did you catch it? Before I play it again, let's go back to near the beginning of the movie, where Mr. Keating teaches the boys how to walk independently. Thank you, gentlemen. Have you noticed everyone started off with their own stride, their own pace? Mr. Pitts, taking his time. He knew he'll get there one day. Cameron, you can see him thinking, is this right? It might be right, it might be right. I know that, maybe not, I don't know. Mr. Overstreet, driven by a deeper force. Yes. We know that, all right. Now, I didn't bring him up here to ridicule them. I brought them up here to illustrate the point of conformity, the difficulty in maintaining your own beliefs in the face of others. Now, those of you, I see the look in your eyes like, I would have walked differently. Well, ask yourselves why you were clapping. Now, let's watch it again. Did you notice it this time? At about the halfway point, Todd's footsteps fall in time with those of the principal. Couple this with the ticking clock in the corner, 
the trophy case shining in the light, and the reversal of progress illustrated by moving right to left. I think this is a great final statement about his state of mind and how he's succumbing to authority once again. Some people might call this out as just a coincidence, but honestly, I'm not so sure. After all, this is Peter Weir we're talking about, director of The Truman Show and Master and Commander, the latter of which is heralded as one of the most accurate and detailed historical films ever produced. Weir just doesn't strike me as the sort of director who takes these scenes lightly. So that's it. Four scenes and techniques that really jumped out at me while watching this film. It leaves you wondering what your life could be if you decided to shake off the shackles of the obligations imposed on you and truly seize the day. If you liked what you saw, make sure to let me know. I'm always looking for feedback and new ideas.